Hey, you. You don't feel like playing Salomon Great or Attic Nister? Might I interest you in a war criminal who has been meta-relevant for the last five years? Hi, everyone. Link Tournament Kevin here. Welcome to a quick guide on how to play Sky Striker, the absolute best deck to play for the event. Who am I, you ask? I'm the best MD Sky Striker player according to my mom, and you know, moms never lie to the kids. She also says I'm really cool and smart too. Anyways, I have played the deck since day one in 2018. And of course, if you didn't notice already, my entire Yu-Gi-Oh! channel basically revolves around that specific deck. So if you're looking for even further in-depth gameplay and discussion on Sky Striker, don't forget to sub and like and all that fun stuff too. And if you're already someone who's a Ray simp like myself, or a complete beginner to the gospel of Ray, stick around. I'll break down this video into specific parts so you can quickly reference it. Sky Striker is a control deck that revolves Balls around using powerful Sky Striker spells to disrupt and prevent your opponent from playing optimally. The deck itself doesn't do anything flashy with making untargetable boss monsters to get Kaiju by, nor does it simply rely on Monkey Flip Floodgate like Eldritch. There is no single win condition for Sky Striker, but it's through the grind game, my friend. Playing Striker means you can possibly last longer than one turn and just wear your opponent down until their life points go to zero, or you just do whatever to make them hit surrender. Lucky for you, you don't have to remember any combos either. And guess what? There's only a Currently, two main deck monsters. You got a bunch of spells and all that fun stuff too. So alongside Ray's arsenal mech suits, you're gonna get that W sooner than later. Well, actually, probably later, because you know it's a control deck and you gotta grind your opponent. Here is a quick speed run through the cards and what they do. If you want a more in-depth discussion on every card, please check out my written guide or this video right here. Remember that mostly every Sky Striker spell has an additional effect if you have three or more spell cards in your graveyard. So let's start off with the spells. Engage searches any striker card. You also draw one card. Widow Anchor negates a monster effect and also can steal. Afterburns destroys a face-up monster and also you can destroy a spell with trap. Maneuvers, afterburners with reverse. Shark Cannon banishes, you can summon instead if you have three. Eagle Booster, unaffected by card effects, can't be destroyed by battle. Multi-roll, resets Sky Striker spells in graveyard based on activations. Send a card and your opponent can't respond to your engage. Every zero has a pot of duality like effect. And it's at the graveyard, you can summon another striker monster. Speaking of monsters, Ray's literally probably the most broken warrior monster of all time. Rosie O'Donnell can special summon herself out of the graveyard if your opponent's extra monster zone monster leaves the field and can also negate an opponent's effect monster upon summon. Also, here are those weird blue cards you might have heard of called Lynx. So Red Ray adds back a spell from the graveyard, <coughs> engage. Blue Ray searches a striker spell not in the graveyard, <coughs> engage. Yellow Ray stops an attack. Green Ray sends a striker card to the graveyard and can attack directly. Don't send engage. Finally, Zeke banishes any face-up monster until the end of the next turn. Here are some quick tips generally. Remember that you can double dip with Ray's effect during the battle phase to do 3000 damage. Remember the Shizuku Shuffle. Don't send engage to graveyard unless you know for sure you can resolve Kagari's effect. Striker can be a proactive or reactive deck depending on your situation and playstyle. I don't think there is a wrong method so long as you get the W. However, I like to play very aggressive, choosing to put it upon my opponent to have the solutions rather than the other way around. That being said, here are some tips on the most difficult and skill intensive mirror in Yu-Gi-Oh history. Number 1. Send Rose Rose sets up value for your afterburners in Zeke. Because Rose's graveyard summon and negate happen simultaneously, meaning your opponent's array from graveyard will be negated, and so if they tribute her, they will just lose it. Haha. <laughs> Activate engage as many times as possible. I mean, no brainer, right? <laughs> and set up multi roll to recur your stuff over and over and over. Easy peasy, right? Hi everybody, real life Kevin here. I'll quickly go over deck list, okay? 3 Valor, 3 Maxi, 3 Ash, double Ghost Spell, Triple Ray. Remember, no Ray, no play so I'd always say I'm not a rapper. Uh, double Rose, double Pankertops, double Nibiru, one Rota, double Engage, double Afterburners, one Jamming Wave, one Multi Roll, double Cyclone, double Call by one Hornet Drone, double Widow Anchor, one Eagle Booster, one Shark Cannon, one Cross Out, three Infinite Imperm. Fairly standard extra deck. Red Ray, three Blue Ray, three Green Ray, one Yellow Ray, one Nightmare Phoenix, double Zeke, one Triple Burst Dragon, one Unicorn, one Selene, and one Axis Code Talker. Okay, I'll quickly go over why I'm playing set cards. Because Packer Tops is really good because it applies pressure on your opponent. Also, it's basically like a MST or a free pop on a body, right? And it's also, you know, special summon itself, so it's very good. Nibiru hits, you know, Marinsa, Salomon Great, maybe Striker potentially, Tribugate as well, Live Twins, all that fun stuff. It can probably be up to three, but I feel three maybe is too much. Ghost Spell says no to Call By, also kind of Marinsa as well. Um, other than that, everything else I believe is fairly standard. Ego Booster, usually I would not play, but in some kind of form like this, I would play it so I can ensure Red Ray goes off and we can add back our engage, or in case we need to make sure Zeke gets rid of the Marincess monster, we can make sure it resolves, right? But it probably doesn't matter because they probably have trap. And the reason why I'm playing Triple Burst Dragon, 
is because if you do not know what it does, right? Once per turn during the damage step, when a spell card, trap card, or monster effect is activated, a quick effect, you can negate the activation. So, you know, negate the ray. <laughs> You're playing the mirror. Also does piercing and, you know, has a bonus effect where except the turn of a special summon, you contribute and then summon a link, one, link two or lower. So, you know, resummon your red ray. Other than that, flex spot, you can probably change instead of playing, let's say, an extra green ray or something like that. You can obviously play dark, the charmer, but sometimes I run through three of them. Uh, unicorn, you can also play dark that instead. Other than that, any other alternative cards I might play instead based on the testing and all that stuff. Uh, your flex spots are probably jamming wave and cross out instead of those you can probably play kaijus or something like that but other than that there is some cards maybe you may not or may not know fantastical dragon phantasme is a very underrated card for basically any deck except sky striker because it summons in the main monster zone if you don't know what it does you can special summon this card from your hand draw cards equal to the number of link monsters your opponent controls plus one so if you summon link one you get to draw two cards and then you have to put one back right uh, and then it also has a bonus effect where when your opponent targets basically, you know, any monster you control, you can negate it by discarding a card. So, you know, gives protection, all that fun stuff. Good old Daniel's Dragon. Another thing you may have heard of, may or may not, Sinet Universe is another card that may come into clutch. Uh, all linked monsters you control gain 300. Once per turn, you can target one monster in your graveyard, shuffle it into the deck. So you can shuffle, you know, your red ray or their opponent's ray, something like that. And then also, if this card is on the field destroyed by card effect, send all monsters and extra monsters onto the graveyard. May come up, maybe not, who knows. Other than that, uh, I should quickly mention, what about the other striker cards, Kevin? They're complete garbage. Don't bother wasting extra deck space with that. Uh, Area 0 is too slow uh, at the moment, and it's only worth it if you're playing an extreme amount of uh sky striker card so you know if this is at three this is at three then it's probably worth playing at least one so maybe you can top deck and search into with that because it's free value with ray but other than that it's not worth it um it's too bricky and i like multi-roll it's not technically a starter card right you need another card for it to you know do something and sometimes you might have awkward hands where say you draw like all other four cards like hand traps or something you know it's just a dead card in your hand why play that when you can play another card if you need more starters and you feel like you're not seeing Ray or Rose or anything like that, because uh, Konami hates you in RNG, then play an additional Rose, right? That's what I would do instead. Do not bother with Omri um, Hercules base. Do not bother with Vector Blast, all that other stuff. Not worth it, all right? So now let's look into some gameplay, all right?
So there you have it. Strike is a really good deck, right? If you want to see more, leave a like, comment down below what you are going to be playing for the Link Tournament, yeah? Because of course you're going to be playing Sky Striker, right? Nothing else. Anyways, thanks for watching. Please leave a like, comment, sub, all that fun stuff. If you want to be a member, it costs one American dollar. So, bye-bye. Goodbye, Ray.